Hi, it's Danny here from Off The Tracks. Now, if you want to win yourself a brand new Xbox Series X or even better, a PlayStation 5, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel. It's that simple. All you have to do is hit that red button, which says subscribe. So when the channel has hit 1,000 subscribers, we are going to pick a random name from the list and then you will win one of these prizes. So subscribe. That's all we're asking. Just subscribe. Anyway, happy riding. Hello and welcome back to Off The Tracks. It's a brand new episode of Front Row and today I'm really excited about this one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is only Sean from Parksville. How are you, mate? I'm good, thank you. Yourself, mate? Yeah, not too bad, man. Not too bad. I'm happy that the parks are back open. It's oh, great man. to be back in there. How are yes. you feeling? Yeah, same. Absolutely same. Like, for me, it was just walking back in the place that was probably more exciting than any of the rides, which is funny, but it was just... It's been so long. I just missed that feeling of just being inside a park and just seeing people as well. It's yeah. so nice. So nice. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Have you been anywhere special? Anywhere nice? Where's your favourite f- favorite park you've visited since reopening? Uh, well, we've been to... We went to back to Orton Towers. That was... Well, we saw you, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, on opening day. That was just such a great atmosphere. Like, it was just... It was really nice. Um, I really, really enjoyed that day. It was just chilled. But like I say, it was just bumping into everyone. Like loads of, because I just, I think a bit like you, I started speaking to lots of people over lockdown mm-hmm. that I didn't know before. So, uh, you know, just seeing people and chatting with them, like we've known no, each other for ages. It's great to put like names to faces. Yeah, isn't it? it was so cool. But, um, and then the day after we went to Paulton's, which was our first ever trip. <sighs> uh, and Tornado Springs was uh, like just incredible, incredible area. Is it as good as yeah. it looks? Because all the images yeah. and everything I see on social media looks so good. Like, is it? Yeah. Does it live up to the hype? It, I, I think I personally think it does. Like, I, you know, I hadn't really seen that much from updates and stuff, um, but I'd seen like the pictures that like um, that Marcus had taken from thrill riders and it looked so good but i was like is it gonna live up to it because i've been disappointed mm-hmm. one too many times but honestly it was it's a stunning play it's just it's got that it's got that kind of universal disney level theming where oh, wow. i wouldn't say it's like as up to their standard because for example disney go to insane levels but you know where you go into a park and it's just or an area and everywhere you look there's just something to pick out it's it's exactly like that oh, i love really. that yeah i've tried um, not to watch too many vlogs because yeah. i kind of don't want to spoil it for myself i've, I've sort of obviously seen you know like yeah the, the coasters and whatnot but yeah i'm excited to get back it's, there i saw some of the pictures that everybody shared and oh, it just looks so nice everywhere looks so fresh it is it's just nothing better than going to a fresh new ride yeah. or a fresh new area <laughs> that new everything smell yeah <laughs> honestly that you could just smell the tarmac as you was walking in and beautiful was, uh, all the effects are working like they've just got little effects everywhere like a phone ringing every now and again and there's like a, a kind of an engine that like revs up and there's like smoke coming out of it and it's just it's <sighs> so well little done, details so well like that make it though don't they I yeah it's a big, big part of it. Oh, I love that. Well, that'll be awesome. We have to get that. There. Well, yeah. before we jump in some major questions then, just quick intro then. Tell us about yourself. Obviously, I know who you are. Parksville for me. I think some of your cinematics... Like it's it's so difficult to for me to like film a vlog without thinking like oh, I'm going to get my park spill on you know. So like, tell us a little bit about your channel. Yeah. How did you get started? And you know what is Park Spill all about? Um, well, it's we're basically just a vlog channel, um, and th- we we started it up um, last year. Um, it was it was like during lock the first lockdown. Yeah, we, we that's when we one- started really. Yeah, and it was like we started when there was nothing to vlog. So yeah, it was just hilarious. <laughs> but I think we, we'd filmed a vlog. Um, our first theme park vlog was at Alton Towers for fireworks in 2019. Oh, nice. And it was just a like, little, I just wanted to test it out because I, I've watched vlogs for years. Um, mm. And a lot of my friends, they know how much I'm into theme parks and stuff and, and watching vlogs. And they were just like, why don't you try it? And I was like, nah, that's cringe. I was like, I, I couldn't do that around a park. <laughs> um and then uh it kind of was just i guess in my head and then i just i tried we tried it out because what we used to do anyway was we'd we've been on like loads of theme park trips me and joe uh, my mm. fiance who we also she, we she, all know joe yeah, joe's joe. class yeah it yeah. was great to meet joe um and 
we, we've always taken like a little handy cam around with us anyway um and just filmed them for like just like our own just watching back and stuff and um it was a pr- pretty rubbish camera but because we'd done it so many times it felt kind of natural and i started yeah. doing it properly and we was like okay we've actually had a bit of practice with this now um but that those videos will never see a lot of day because they're just terrible <laughs> but, um <laughs> But yeah, we, we started, like I say, in lockdown, um, started doing like sit down videos and top 10 stuff, what, where everyone, I think, you know, when you haven't got anything else to do, you just end up making them yeah. top content, don't you? Um, but with, with that, I just tried to do something a bit different, which was kind of felt the way I did some of the intros were quite cinematic, even just yeah. being at home. Well, that's what everyone started coining it was cinematic. So yeah. I kind of rolled with that. And then when the parks did open, I kind of went, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do with my vlogs is like almost shoot them as like a mini, a mini film, um, try and give them like a, yeah, like a film quality, like with mm. an intro. And yeah, like some and of the stuff is movie quality. You watch it. And, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, you because know, because <laughs> as well, I think because of the effects and obviously for me, another part of the question was like, did were you into video editing before? Or what? How did you? Because the videos are yeah. so good, and like, even the intro and stuff, where it's like the cardboard cutout, and you know, it's just it's just class. Like, so how did yeah. how did that all happen? Did, were you already a bit of a videographer before? Yeah, so I um, I've been making films since i was like a kid basically like i was right. obsessed obsessed with films um i remember watching a uh do you remember on like the vhs is where at the end of a film you got from blockbuster or something uh at the end of the film they'd sometimes be behind the scenes making like oh, I, mem- yeah. I remember watching one of them um and being like i want to start making i want to be that i want that to be my job um and as i grew up i just i loved like kind of like i was a skater i loved uh, things like Jackass and uh, yeah. movie like CKY with like Bam Margera and stuff. So me and my mates would just make these like stupid little films and I would film them and then I'd edit, edit them. Um, and then eventually I, just, I ended up just studying it at um, college. Right. And then um, went to university. Didn't really learn much at university, but had loads of free gear to, to play around with, which is really cool. Awesome. Um, but yeah, and then I've basically been freelance video um kind of a video i don't know video creator for the last 10 years professionally wow. well it does show to be fair mate like when, when i look at it i remember my early stuff i've kind of i've always done bits of social media editing and things like that, and small bits of video editing but nothing yeah. like vlog editing or anything and yeah. I've, I've even seen myself just over like a couple of months so i think right like I can see where yeah. I've edited this and I've gone better there. But with yours, I look and I think, well, I don't have a clue how to do any of this. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's it, that, that's what I love about your stuff is, you know, it's it's like, it's almost unachievable for you, like your average man, because some of it looks so cool. Well, I, I guess this is the thing that I try and tell people because it's really nice when people say like, oh, you've, you've like inspired me to, to do yeah. something. And I love hearing that. Mm. But then I also hear some people going, what's the point? Like your stuff's so good. I'm like, that's not the point though. You can't yeah, yeah. compare your start to someone else's. I know like, what you mean. I, I wouldn't say finish because I'm not, I learn stuff every single day. It's yeah. like, and I've even seen your channel progress as well. You know, cause I remember yeah. early days when I first really started getting into the community and me and Xavier wanted to start the channel. I remember I came across your early stuff and it was brilliant then, but then you've seen it grow now. So if you compare it, you know, you, you have seen that evolve. So I think that's a good, a good thing to like point to anybody who, you know, says anything yeah. like that, even somebody who you think's, you know, absolutely pinnacle, you know, yeah. even yourself, you're getting better and better. So that's it. Yeah. I mean, you look at my, I watched like one of my, the first vlog I ever did for my Orton Towers fireworks and like the color grading. I, I, it's obviously I rushed through it and yeah. um, I do spend like way more time on them now, probably more time than I should <laughs> just doing this. Like it will take, it can take me like hours just to do, put together like a, a cinematic, um, okay. just for like a one minute thing because. So you're a bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. I, I think you have to be like, if, if that's, because this is the thing, like um, I don't want people to like look at my stuff and go, that's the only way it should be done. Cause it's not mm. like there's so many kind of vloggers I love watching that are just simple vlogs. Like it's just yes. like, we are here. And if the, the persona, or if I have a gel with a person, you know, who's presenting it, it's like with your stuff, you know, what you and Xavier do, like me and Joe saw, like we got on, started watching your stuff. Like I remember in the early on. days, comment yeah. from you guys. Yeah. And um, we were buzzing because we'd seen yeah. you and, you know, to us, you were, 
you were already a, you know, a really yeah. great YouTuber and creating <laughs> great content. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, you got to realize that when we got that, that was inspiring to us, you know, and then, and then we start, sort of think, right, well, maybe we can, you know, spend a bit more time getting ride shots yeah. and things like that. And so I, I love that. I, you know, I, with the community, just, everybody's just sort of there for each other. And yeah. I've met so many good mates, you know, like Danny and, and yourself and people who I can chat to and, and see in the parks and, you know, it's, it's just, just brilliant. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, I just, I enjoy watching other people's vlogs, you know, yeah. that's, that's, that's never changed. So it's like, I love discovering other like newer people, people I've never heard of before and being like, and you know, like everyone, there's some people will watch my, my stuff. And as soon as I start vlogging, they'll be like, now who is this idiot? Like get him off. But <laughs> that, that's just life, isn't it? You're going to like some people. Of course, gonna, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like others. So I just love doing that. And um, very early on when we started making our stuff, like it was, I remember that feeling of like someone, I look up to like commenting on it. Yeah. Like, like yeah. when I remember like Expedition Theme Park, Sam from Expedition Theme Park nah. commented on one of my vlogs. I remember, I, I think like, I saw it. Was it the t-shirt? Did you have a t-shirt on? And he said- That some, was, that was, was a that, bit like, cause I'm good. I like, speak to Sam quite a lot now. Oh wow. But yeah. it was the Efteling vlog I did. And okay. he just- I, I remember that. Yeah. He just caught, and I was just like, I can't believe like- That's Sam. amazing. And I, it just blew my mind. And then from there, it was like every, I remember doing a live stream for like my thousand- when we got to a thousand um, last year and the amount of people who started popping up in the chat, like, yeah. uh, like Coaster Bar and like Jack and just, just loads of different people and just being like overwhelmed by it and being like almost frozen live stream being like, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Oh no, they're actually watching now. Like, what do <laughs> I was a bit like, I'm so, my first ever going off the tracks. I think Jack and, and Archie yeah. Nemesis and a couple of the boys came in and I was a bit like, oh, like, you yeah. know, I see these guys in the parks and they're cool yeah. guys, you know, and I, and I watch all the vlogs. So mm. I think it's easy enough to, when you watch the vlogs to kind of get that little bit of excitement and, you know, yeah. and when you get the little bit of recognition, you know, uh, Harry from course about commented on one of my, um, you know, my little documentary style videos yeah. I've been doing in the off season and just meant a lot for him to, you know, know that he'd watched it, took the yeah. time to, to comment. And, but Sam from expedition, I think what, what a great guy, you know, I think yeah. he's a massive, massive, um, inspiration for a lot of my documentary stuff because mm. he's just it's just so watchable and that's what yeah. i love about your vlogs that <clears throat> you can get them on and it just breaks the sort of format of a vlog you know when you've got all this crazy editing and even just your intro and stuff like that's what i love about the different creators is when everybody doesn't follow the same you know format yeah. and for instance like theme park worldwide such a legendary sort of theme park vlogging channel it's so easy to just copy that format yeah but when people don't and they do their own thing i think it's that's just great seeing the verse versatility yeah i think it's just taking taking a lot inspires you and then you'll eventually do something that you know puts your own stamp on it and makes yeah. it into something different and absolutely i think that's it you know i've started seeing a lot more people like doing kind of the similar type of uh, kind of intros that I do and I didn't yeah. really that's the reason I did it because I didn't see anyone else doing it before yeah um and then because like Coaster Bot's always always got good he's always had uh good um kind of off-ride shots like a yeah. you know and that uh, lovely production as in a usually yeah yeah and same with like uh, Coaster Studios you know they've oh, always, yeah. always had nice shots but I was like I wanted to do yeah, like a cinematic take on it yeah. with like a choice of music and the editing and, and it all. And the edits that I, I, I think I touched on it before that we don't necessarily straight away know how you've done it. I like that, yeah. you know, when you've got something and, and you know, spinning in and all this yeah. kind of, and I'm just like, this is mental. Like <laughs> I do cross fades and maybe a yeah. fade to black, you know, like this is mental. Like I yeah. appreciate that. It's probably a bit over the top, but it's, it get that's the thing you got to get, like you got to try and stand out and, uh, especially early on, I was trying to do all these crazy different transitions to just try and shock people. And now the problem is when you do it too often, then people just get used to it and they're like, oh, well, it's nothing, it's nothing yeah, different now. Again, so then I have to like yeah. change it up and do no transitions or do something, mm. do a bit of the sound design. So I'm always just trying to like tweak it and just say, say like, kind of like, how can I do something that no one's going to suspect or be like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, so. yeah I love that. That's the element of surprise. That's yeah, also, yeah, yeah. what would you say then is your favourite video or project that you've worked on yourself so far? Mm. Oh, it's such a difficult one. I mean... I didn't, see, I, I didn't want to yeah. send you the questions because I love to get that reaction. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a hard one. I mean, obviously, I 
to be asked by Orton Towers to do their Scarefest trailer like last year was just like Ridiculous. insane. Like I got excited about that. Yeah, too. you oh, know what I mean. Like, I mean, I can't imagine how you felt because I was like, ah, like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, it's a crazy thing. And it, the the funniest thing was, it was like we was at Orton Towers at the time, and Orton Towers Twitter like messaged me, like DM'd me, and I was just like, Orton Towers sliding in my DMs. Like, and then they're just like, we want you to do sliding this. in there, <laughs> like, like the water yeah. part. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that so that was obviously a dream to make, and yeah, just make everything. Congrats from on that it. as well. The great Thanks, job. Man. It was so good. It was awesome, and it was just a really fun project. And it was like seeing behind the scenes of Orton Towers, and you know, going into all the staff bits, and then like talking to all the scare actors who then I then saw throughout the whole scare season. And it was just a really good, really good time. And, um, but yeah, it's just, there's just so many, cause I always think, Oh, this is my favorite. Like I did the tornado Springs uh, mm. vlog and I did it. And I was like, that's my favorite thing I've ever done. But yeah. then I, the other day I watched my actualing <laughs> video again and I'm like, no, that's, that's brilliant. It's, yeah. So it's all, it's like different reasons. I like, I like them all, but I'd that's say all. the standout one at the minute would probably be Orton Towers. Cause who gets to make like Orton Towers adverts? Like ridiculous. It's mad. I think it's mad. and that, that recognition, it just, like I said, it, everyone got excited about it, you know, and it is just yeah. to get the recognition from Alton Towers themselves to say, you know, I want, I want this guy to do my, and that's, I love to see Marcus, you know, getting the official ride mm. shots and stuff. Cause so, such a talented guy and, yeah. and it's just I love that seeing you know genuine nice guys that we all know around the park and then the, you know because they are so talented and the stuff's out there consistently the parks get on it and I think it's just brilliant I love that aspect of it you know yeah I think it's great oh. get, getting enthusiasts in, involved in, exactly because we know what's up you know we yeah. know what's going down so you know you know yeah. what a sexy shot is compared to you know maybe some photographer who does weddings now and then and yeah. PR shots and you know mm. it's a different setup so I think it's great I think yeah. it's awesome so in the community who would you say uh, is your biggest sort of inspiration as, as you were starting who would you have watched and sort of think yeah, this mm. guy is awesome uh, I'm trying to think because I don't I need to get this right. <laughs> um, there is, there's like, I mean, one of my biggest inspirations to start actually vlogging um, was like Airtime John, I remember, because he, okay. he like, he was, it's, it's a bit of a random answer because everyone expects me to say like someone who's on like, you know, hundreds, like, well, thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. But Airtime John, I remember watching his vlogs and he opened it up with saying like, look, I'm just a normal guy who likes going to theme parks. I'm not like massively knowledgeable. I don't know the name of every single roller coaster element. I'm just here to have fun. And I was like, that's different because a lot of other channels, they, they focus so heavily on being like very technical, like, and you know, I'm like, yeah, getting I, I all the facts yeah. in. And I was like, I, I've, I've been an enthusiast for, I'd say a proper enthusiast for probably about four years where I've been like learning things. But some of these people have been doing it their entire lives, yeah. like, just like studying and knowing everything and every des every name of every designer. And I was like, actually, like that's such a good take on uh, kind of a vlog style for theme parks. It's like just trying to get a taster of the actual day, mm. um, not just being like how many ride manufacturers. Yeah, I think there you're going to open <laughs> yeah. up to a much bigger audience yeah. potentially as well, you know, because a lot of yeah. people who, um, I remember early days, you know, I was always kind of a bit of an enthusiast. I worked at a theme park in my in my younger years at Camelot, but I, I'd obviously drift away from it, you know, mm. through like getting jobs and getting older and I started yeah. DJing in like nightclubs. So I thought, well, this is fun, <laughs> you know, like, but, yeah, yeah. and then when Xavier came along, he really got into it. it just kind of, mm. kind of, of his own accord. I took him to Blackpool a few times yeah, and he just got the bug. So that sort of i kind of got got it off him you know and it, um but now i'm so happy about it i maybe but i'd say about two years we've been really you know keen yeah. but it's just the best the best thing we ever did i think you know it's, meeting all these people and, it's awesome i'd say i was like a i was an alton towers enthusiast before i was a coast yeah <laughs> i yeah. literally used to go because I, I i went to university in stafford um so i was there like all the time in, in university and even before that i spent most of my childhood growing up in like Drayton Manor <laughs> going there because I lived right next to it when uh growing up um but yeah it, it wasn't until like yeah I'd say like four or five years ago where I kind of started watching vlogs and seeing all these amazing theme parks across the world you know apart from like Disney and Universal everyone knows mm. then but it was just like looking at all these other places and going 
oh, I want to go and wow. do yeah. that now. And then that's when I started just being like a little bit more kind of like understanding the different types of manufacturers yeah. and, and just the different model types. And, um, but it was just a weird one because it was like, I knew so much about one towers. I knew like, I think I read John Wardley's book like so long ago that I just knew the whole, everything about <laughs> it. And then it was suddenly like, Oh, now I can start learning about everything else about mm. theme parks and stuff. Yeah. So it's really cool. But, um, but apart from that, I'd say, Apart from airtime, John, I'd probably say also uh, uh, theme uh, expedition theme park, yeah. just because of what you were saying about how it's more accessible to people. If mm. someone's learning, you know, just starting to get into like this hobby, it's like they can watch a vlog and just get like bombarded with all this information. Yeah, you watch like a ex- expedition theme park video. So well written, aren't they? It's mm. really well written. It's really accessible. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't like kind of. It doesn't intimidate you if you're just mm. getting into things but really informative at the same time so yeah. it can be enjoyed it's easy to watch either. easy to yeah. listen to like i think he's just a really likable guy even though you don't yeah. just kind of see him in the on the channel like and that's a, i think a bit that inspired me because I'm, I'm not keen on the kind of like, like face mm. in the camera sort of yeah. I, I don't i tend to not watch that kind of vlog as much as as stuff that's a lot of park stuff and cinematics and yeah so that inspired me i never I, like i'll never show my face on on the the channel because it's just yeah. not my thing you know but, and that's, I think that's what really got me there is that this guy's not, he doesn't even, he's not bothered, you know, he's not like, look yeah. at me, like, and subscribe yeah. to me. And he's just, he's just so humble with it. And a few times I've reached out to him for things and he's, he's, he's always kind of there, like as he replied. Yeah. And, uh, I'm hoping we can eventually sometimes get him on, um, on, on front row. He has, he has agreed to. So he's just a busy man. You know, he's yeah, a, he's, a busy he's guy. very so. busy. But awesome. <laughs> that's brilliant. So what would, this is going to be a tough one for you, man. What yeah. is your favorite park that you've visited thus far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a I tough think... one because you don't you want to be loyal don't you but yeah <laughs> bloody it's good a, yeah it's a difficult one because there's just so many different parks that i've got like for example like drayton manor grew up there so every time i go there it just reminds me yeah um but then nostalgia the Towers, yeah orton towers is the first theme park i went to that kind of made me fall in love with theme parks like doing nemesis was just like it blew my mind when I did that. When I was, yeah. I think I was about probably like 13, 14. When I, was, I, I think I was exactly the same. Yeah. I was early teens. I went with my yeah. dad, and um, Galactica was, I think it had maybe just opened or it had not been open yeah. long and it wasn't open that day. So we just kind of like marathon nemesis. And yeah, I remember yeah. leaving thinking, like, I don't even care about that flying machine. I just, that was yeah. so good. Like, it took my breath away. It's just such, such a good, and still, like, I got a man, we, managed to get because it was closed we're not on opening day so we got on mm-hmm. yesterday and it was just, oh have you ridden it this season then yeah, yeah. Got it did it three times yesterday and it was just flying man and it's just because obviously when you come back off the close season everything feels more intense like yeah. we went on galactica as our first yeah I, I got to me <laughs> i was like yeah. how that felt so intense yeah like, it's not an intense coaster so when I got back on Nemesis, it was like, oh, wow. That was like, that's the real deal. That's why it's like still so good. my favorite coaster in the UK. Well, it's, it's equal with Icon. But anyway. I'm the same. I argue with myself <laughs> that a lot. And I'll yeah. tell you, Nemesis Inferno, to be fair to it, was so good. It was sublime yeah. on Thursday. So yeah. I need to I need to get back on it, but I don't think it will it will ever overtake Nemesis. Yeah. No, even I'm even if you. I liked it, even if there's one time where I liked it more than Nemesis, yeah. I don't say it just exactly. so the thought, just so the thought block don't like revel in it. You know what I mean? So. Fact, yeah. Well, if you can, <laughs> I think I prefer that to Nemesis. I said we will not speak like yeah. this in my family. Like, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, um, um, so, so apart from that, that then I know that it was a tough answer but what would be your favourite UK park you know the major yeah. sort of like five or six parks that we, I'd, we'd I'd say it's Orton Towers I mean yeah. Blackpool is up there with me I love Pleasure Beach I love I just love how like I just love the whole vibe of Blackpool I it's love so how funny. it's just you can it's a proper like social park you yeah because it's so small it's got that fun for vibe yeah. hasn't it sort of thing and i just i like you know it is it's got a bit of like you kind of uh beach fair tacky yeah kind of vibe and i love it i just like it and it's i always have always have a good day there um i love the the ride lineup just because it's just so mental it's like yeah. you've got all these crazy <laughs> like wooden coasters and stuff <laughs> Some like literally icon. older than our grandmas yeah you know, like literally next to yeah. icon and, yeah but we're so lucky to have that because you go to america there's not many places you could like even mm. 
ride anything class close to, yeah. to these heritage rides. So we are pretty more lucky than we realize, I think, a lot of times to have that type of park. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's Orton Towers. It's just, it's always, I'll go that I'll go, I've been there probably thousands of times now, <laughs> but it's just never lost the magic for me. I just feel yeah. something about it that feels like a resort that more than any other place in the uk that i can think of it's me. more of an experience isn't it yeah. like even with the gardens and stuff i yeah. i grumble because i go so much now yeah, yeah. i do grumble oh i'm getting the sky ride but I, yeah. so i maybe take it for granted but you know you still got to in the summer going having your yeah. lunch in the garden you Mate, could be anywhere in the world you know it, it yeah. isn't it's like you, you think about like this big gothic manor house, right? Yeah. Or the gardens, and um, especially gorgeous. once you start really looking, like reading the history about towers, how it was crazy because there wasn't many planning regulations in the eighties when they mm. managed to start getting all these these rides up. And if it wasn't for like John Broom, who, who's the one who started it all off, like we wouldn't have that place, and there'd be no way you'd be able to build anything there if it that the things that were there. We're, we're, we're not not there so mm. it's just we're so lucky to have a crazy park like that where it's one half the park it's like peaceful and tranquil yeah and you go somewhere else you got like smiler like it's, yeah you've got like listed buildings yeah. and beautiful gardens yeah. that are maintained every day and then like literally the like the smiler it's, that's just mad. like can we yeah. get as well just a, do you know the second lift hill the vertical lift hill can we yeah, just get yeah. these speakers turned down a bit <laughs> so loud it's so pit- it's no like, need for it at all yeah it's, it's have a it's word because i know that i know that you're kind of in there with merlin just have a word for me man. i'll see if i can say it but the problem is they turn it down someone will moan that they want to turn back up again it's so it's loud it's it just just literally it's on like 107 just put it on like yeah. 98 you know just a bit down just it a is bit. it is it does pierce my eardrums when it, when it starts horrendous. laughing and stuff like, <laughs> so um this is another bit a bit of a bit of a sticky question for you have we got any bucket list parks or coasters that you've not managed um, to ride yet well i think like the obvious one is cedar point Every, like it's just got oh, so yeah. many amazing coasters in one one place like legendary coasters as well in, in one place like it's it's going to be on everyone's bucket list isn't it yeah um i think that you know i've started being to europa park i know that's like europa park's a weird one because it hasn't to me it really i think apart from like woden to me it hasn't got any like standout um rides uh, but the p- whole park itself just looks beautiful. And it's like kind of Epcot with actual good, massive like rides in it. Yeah. So it looks beautiful. So I really can't wait to go there. But I'd say immediate future, it's got to be like Lisaberg. I think mm. there's a lot of yeah. a lot of great like rides there I want to do. Um, you know, to be able to do like my the first like, Intamin prefab, I think it's going to be there um and then you know obviously helix so when i want to compare oh, yeah. that against like icon i know yeah it looks like, spectacular yeah. helix doesn't it it's just a whole park because it's like on the side of a hill like the views you see from it just like yeah. absolutely stunning and it's just one of them parks i think if you get a night ride especially on helix it's just going to be insane um but yeah i think they're they're my top that that's leesburg's where i want to go to next um and like kind of like Dollywood, I'd love to. Dollywood, oh, looks yeah, in, so not. It looks like my vibe, like where it's yeah, kind of just it looks like, like a fun part, doesn't it? Yeah. Something it looks- different. There's like a like um. I, is it Iron Smith or whatever they are? Yeah. You know, geezers beating iron, and there's like yeah. you can get like uh, teddy bears made out of straw, and somebody like hand. It's also all sorts. It's, of it's crazy because crazy it's like Silver Dollar City. Uh, it, obviously, they own Hersh and own Silver Dollar City, and that started off as like a little kind of. Uh, uh, I guess like I don't know. You ever been to like Black Country Museum? Like where it's mm. it's kind of like a it's it's meant to show you what how people lived in the past. So that yeah. that's how Silver Dollar City started, and then they but uh well it's too much to go into but they, they look very similar and um i just love the whole vibe like you say all, all the kind of crafts that are going on yeah all the food looks amazing um and yeah just lightning rod i need to do that i need to mm. do it <laughs> yeah like it look, especially now they've, they've eye boxed that like most of the the track mm. haven't they the, the, so it, it's uh, and there's like a bit where it goes from wood to eye box so you can kind yeah. of box two two kind of rmc styles off there. yeah it's going to be two Mental. different styles and yeah I'm, it still I'm, looks it still looks slow on the launch though compared to when mm. it first opened you see if you see i used to haul over the top yeah, yeah. it's insane yeah. how different it is but yeah it looks fun either way so yeah spot on. Mine. 
We love that. Right. This one's for Danny. 13. Is it good or is it bad, Sean? It's great, mate. It's, it's great. So good. It's oh, so good. Oh, there, there is, wrong answer. <laughs> there We're is looking nothing, for terrible. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, I mean, I can understand how people were uh, disappointed with it when it because of all the hype and stuff. Yeah. Um, but like, it's just fun. Like, it is yeah. fun. I don't know if it's worth the two hour waits it gets. I, I think, think that's think the part of the issue. Yeah. It's such a long wait and it's such a short ride. Yeah, there's, for me, just before the drop yeah. track, there's just not a lot going on. Mm. And then after the drop track, there's not a lot going on. So it's it's kind of... The, the annoying thing about it is if you get a back row ride in it, which you can't at the minute because the water dummies are there, but if you get a back row go on it and it's later on, you do, it is actually like, I wouldn't say it's like intense, but it's really, really fun at the back, especially when you go over that first hill because it's, yeah. it's bigger than it seems like. Uh, and it's just, it's just, like I say, it's fun. But the problem for me is I think why it just get a bit of hate. It's like love hate, isn't it? It's like a lot yeah, of posters so. at towers. I love yeah. hate. Um, is that you can't see the ride. So when you're in the queue, yeah. there's no ride talk, shots. It's yeah. no, it's, it's kind of just a bit boring and a bit mm. penny. So I think I can understand why people don't rate it as much as mm. it's just, I, it's just, but it's so popular, isn't it? I can't yeah. believe how popular it is all the time. But, um, but when I did Hagrid's at Universal, cause that's obviously ah. the same model. Wow. Stop it. Was, it. it was insane. <laughs> it looks like, mental. It's it one of the so only funny. rides that, I mean, I've done like Hulk and I did Dueling Dragons yeah. and I've done that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I've, if I've not been in that long, obviously Hulk's been redone. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need to do, I've seen the POV for, for Hagrid's and damn, it's just looks, it's just not even a roller coaster, is it? No, it's, it's just beyond that now. It's but, yeah, it's not. It's just, it's a weird experience. Cause it's, it's imagine. The launches aren't particularly strong on it, but it's got a good story to it. It's themed really well. And it's just well, the guy, I, th- I think it was Coaster Studios summed it up. He was like, the launches aren't strong, but they feel like you're on a motorbike. Yeah. And I yeah, thought, well, that's great then. Yeah, that, yeah. I'm down with that because that's even better in a way. You know, if yeah. it was sort of beyond what you'd imagine a motorbike feels like, you know, so... Mm. That's yeah. amazing. Awesome. Yeah, great. Well, I'm happy that I'm happy that you like 13 because it's something that Danny <laughs> can give you a stick about. So spot on. So have you got any tips for anybody who's watching and especially me for who wants to get the channel popping or they're going to start or any, any kind of tips for people starting out mm. early days? Um, yeah, I guess it just, I mean, the, the, ov- the most obvious and cliche one is like, just make sure whatever you're doing, it's like you enjoy it. Like, uh, because, you're going to be putting in a lot of work for like no payoff for quite a while. Yeah. Um, you, you know, we, we were lucky in the fact that we had a few videos like pop off very early and that kind of elevated the channel and, and yeah. got it in front of other eyes, but not everyone has that look. It is, it's very, it's looking tough. Yeah. It's, it's a really slug. tough. Um, and there's no other way. There's like no shortcuts you can do because, you know, obviously like if you were just like, Every, people can buy followers but that does the but youtube then like clears them out every like few months anyway mm. and it's like well i feel like that takes fake? so much away from it like for yeah. me and xavier we watch it and when we hit 500 it wasn't long ago and all the guys from off the tracks massive shout to them all on the yeah. discord they kind of helped i think we were on about 490 or something and they all went and subbed yeah. and, and we got there and it felt amazing because it's hard work payoff you know it feels genuine then doesn't it and it's of like course, people have yeah. decided to subscribe to yeah channel because they want to watch out it's Astor. all honest work you know you, yeah it's something to um, be proud of but it's it's you've just got to try and learn, just learn, watch as many videos about especially with algorithm because it is a bit of a, a minefield and there are some cool tips that you can pick up along the way like things with thumbnails like what work better and what don't yeah and, of course yeah um, but it's I found that when we get the biggest growth on our channel is when I stop looking at all the analytics I've not looked at my analytics in like two months. Um, mm-hmm. And it wasn't until someone point messaged me the other day saying you're nearly on 2000 subs. I was like, wow. Yeah. And, and Amazing. Looked, and we'd grown like 80 subscribers in like the last three weeks. And it's amazing, I've, I've, I've been through these weird times where I get really addicted to looking at the algorithm and, and thinking, well, what can we do? And then you have to remind yourself like, why, why are you so obsessed with it? Like if you like what you're doing, like surely that should be enough. Uh, and that. then, that will come through, I think, in your content if you genuinely feel seem like you're enjoying it. Mm. Um, and you know, I think people 
mention like burnout quite a lot and it can be easy to do that when mm. you keep putting all your energy in because people don't a lot of people don't think they don't realize how much time goes into a vlog even just a normal like not not, not talking about my vlog specifically but just putting like the type of sit down videos you do you know when you look into like blackpool's past and yeah things. it's a lot of lot of research a lot of yeah script writing. you don't realize how much yeah. research is until you start sometimes yeah. as well and you think damn my this yeah is- it's a lot of it's like doing a it's like doing a dissertation or something you know yeah it's crazy so but and you know if you don't get something right you're getting pulled up in the comments fast fast but i would just say yeah just do that just be yourself don't try and put like a fake persona on either because Mm. it will soon it will soon like drop off and you'll be like just just don't be afraid to be yourself i think yeah say say what you think and i really respect people who just you know even if they say something controversial i'm like well that's you at least you're saying what what yeah yeah so love that um, yeah spot on mate spot on so what's your favorite bit of gear that you use have you got like a a piece that you couldn't live without or something Um, you use daily yeah i mean I don't, I'd say like my lenses, I think, you know, lenses are the thing that people don't talk about enough because you go, what camera are you going to get? And this mm. and that. And it's like, um, it, the lenses make the difference with shots. Um, get, and plus getting a good lens will last you a lifetime. Yeah. You get a camera body, for example, you, you'll be changing that every four four or five years anyway so lenses will stay with you and they are expensive to invest in um like yeah i'd say i'd say the lenses are probably the the, the things that I, I i cherish the most i guess yeah. um i'm trying to think what else like gimbals I, I don't use gimbals as much as everyone thinks i use i do go around i do spend like a little time on them but um a lot of the times I just try and fake the gimbal shots with like a neck, just like, just move my feet. Yeah. And That's how I do it. I'm, yeah. I'm just like, I keep my body yeah. close to my camera and I just pan. Like. Yeah. If you get, if you get a, if you get a camera strap, put it real on your camera. If you've got a camera, like you can put a camera strap on, hold it really close, tight. You can go out like that. You get loads of stabilization on it and nice. I get, I get a lot of shots that way. So I could live with a gimbal to be honest, but um, top tip from yeah, Parks. Top tip. Yeah. Top yeah. Tip. <laughs> I might add that as a new feature. Parks yeah. Bill's top tip. I'll just have you pop in at the bottom. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, thanks mate. That's, that's brilliant. That so before we wrap it up, I w- I'd love to know what, what your big plans are for 2021. I know traveling's not exactly, yeah. mm. it's not exactly a clear cut thing, but have you got any plans that are, that are in oh, set in yeah. stone? We've got, we've got, I really, oh no, I can't say that one. Um, <laughs> Secret. Like there's a massive, there's a massive project I'm working on at the minute and that's going to be really awesome to show everyone. But yeah. apart from that, um, it's just, we obviously European trips aside, you know, we've got loads of deferred European trips. Yeah, of course. Done. And if we can, we, we actually will go and do them. I think it's going to be um, unbelievable. I think the whole of the UK yeah. indus- like theme park community is going to yeah. be in like, you know, Europe. It's, <laughs> if we can. Honestly, it's, I just need to get out of the country so bad right now. Same. But, um, it sounds harsh, but, you know, I'm still supporting all the UK parks and I can't wait to get around um, going to do. Um, when does this go out, by the way? Um, I th- I'm probably in the next couple of days. It won't be. Okay. We'll get it edited and we'll we'll whip it out there, mate. Yeah. Cool. I'll save the one. I'll, the other one I was going to say then because it's ahead of time. It's weird, man. It feels like I'm not. Yeah. Gonna... Hold on. <laughs> you can cut this bit out. Cut this. Bit out. <laughs> <laughs> No, because I'm I'm doing like walk 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 the woody um on how oh, nice and be invited by the park to go and do it. So Love we're gonna be like, we're gonna be the first one of the first people to do it. So I can't wait to do that. Nice, um, that's gonna be really cool. Um, and then uh, we we've got some we're working with Merlin annual pass now, so we're gonna be working on some content to go and like film some hopefully film some like more behind the scenes type stuff. Um, which would be really cool. Um, but yeah, it's just just enjoying ourselves and getting out to the parks and uh, yeah, just meeting meeting people we talk to all the time. I'd, I can't wait to meet more people because yeah, that's, so that's one fun, of my highlight, highlights of my day at Towers. And yeah. Is when people- well, we said this, I think that Thought Park for, for me and Xavier was probably one of our favourite theme park days ever. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, with, uh, we met Danny, we met all the OTT gang, uh, Xavier yeah. met Lewis and theme park Jake, who he's been doing like a podcast with uh, Off yeah, The Rails. Yeah. If you've not watched it, guys, go and watch it. Um, so it was just brilliant to see it. Everyone just coming together and having such a laugh. And, yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. 
yeah it was cool it was laughing cool. but yeah it's, it's been absolute, an absolute pleasure mate to have you on yeah. and uh, yeah I hope everyone's in, enjoyed watching but Sean thanks so much for coming on mate so there we have it thank you so much for watching Front Row here and off the tracks my name's Lee and don't forget to subscribe because at 1000 subs we're giving away ever a PS5 or an Xbox Series X it's going to be awesome so yeah thanks for everyone for watching thanks again for Sean for coming on and see you next time Thank you.